In this video, we'll talk about Staphylococcus epidermidis. Brief overview of the defining characteristics tells us that Staph epidermidis is gram positive, catalase positive, coagulase negative, and urease positive. And if you're going in order, you should have watched the Staph aureus video first. And what I'll point out again here, which I made pretty clear in that video, is that on exams, the test writer is going to ask you to differentiate Staph aureus from Staph epidermidis because both of these, aureus and epidermidis, are cocci. So they're going to appear spherical, round, they're going to cluster together. So if you look at them under a microscope, you really can't tell the difference. So where the test writer is going to go is that either they're going to give you coagulase positive or negative, and you'll have to figure out which one it is, or they're going to give you the clinical sequelae that these pathogens cause. So in the case of aureus, they might give you like toxic shock syndrome. And in the case of epidermidis, they might, as you'll see later in this video, talk about some type of catheter associated infection. But remember from the staph aureus video that positive aura for aureus. So all of the things that could be positive or negative for staph aureus are therefore positive. So if you see coagulase negative, you got to think staph epidermidis. Now, some other things I want to point out about Staph epidermidis, it's part of the normal skin flora, and that point is really important as you sort of conceptualize what kind of infections this pathogen causes. And the other two bits of information that you need to memorize is one, Staph epidermidis is novobiosin sensitive, and two, Staph epidermidis does not ferment mannitol. And I don't need you to understand on a detailed level what these mean or what they entail. Don't worry about all that. That's just garbage. But just memorize it because these two points, in addition to the coagulase negative bit and urease positive bit, are another way for you to differentiate staph epidermidis from other type of staph, like staph aureus. So as I said, staph epidermidis stands for staphylococcus. So just like staph aureus, staph epidermidis is a staphylo coccus, or it has cocci, which are these spherical, round-shaped pathogens. So if the test writer is going to be a real jerk and give you an image on your exam, and you see something like this, for the most part, you can't really tell if this is Staph epidermidis or Staph aureus. Perhaps a seasoned pathologist would, or histologist would be able to tell you immediately, but you being a student, you're not going to be able to tell. So what does that mean for you for the purposes of exams? Practically speaking, where the test writer is going to go is they're either going to give you the coagulase positive versus negative bit, which you have my mnemonic from the Staph aureus video to help you sort that out. They'll talk about the different types of clinical syndromes that you'll see, and you already watched my Staph aureus video, so you should be familiar with what that causes, and later in this video, you'll be familiar with the clinical syndromes that Staph epidermidis causes, and we'll get to that in just a bit. Or they'll give you something that requires you to know that staph epidermidis is either part of the normal skin flora or is novobiosin sensitive or does not ferment mannitol. And that is to say that I need to give you an awesome sexy mnemonic for you to memorize these three points because everything else you'll be able to figure out because you've already watched my staph aureus video and you're going to understand the clinical differences between epidermidis and aureus. So when I think about staph epidermidis, obviously the thing that comes to mind is the epidermis. And I told you that understanding that staph epidermidis is part of the normal skin flora makes a lot of sense in the context of what type of clinical problems staph epidermidis causes. So when you think about staph epidermidis, think about staph epidermis. And specifically what I want you to think about is the skin on somebody's hands and fingers. And the reason I want you to think of that is because staph epidermidis is part of our normal skin flora. It's on our hands, it's on our fingers right now as you sit at your computer and as I hold this microphone and tell you everything that you need to know about this pathogen. So staph epidermidis, I want you to start thinking, it, thinking about it as staph epidermis and specifically the epidermis on our hands and fingers. And when I think about hands and fingers, my first mnemonic comes from my good friend Dikembe Mutombo. Uh, he's not actually my good friend. I don't know him. But he was in a he was a famous basketball player and was in a bunch of commercials where he would wag his finger and would go, no, 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 not today. And so when I think about this mnemonic, the no, no, no part 
reminds me that staph epidermidis is part of the normal skin flora. It's no vobiotin sensitive and it does no ferment mannitol. And those three no's because he's wagging his finger and his finger has this, the epidermis on it, you wanna associate staph epidermidis with epidermis with hands and fingers for two reasons. First, this mnemonic, and second, later in the video, this will make a lot more sense. So when you think about staph epidermidis, I'm gonna summarize one more time. If you haven't heard it enough already, think staph epidermis, think epidermis on your finger. Think of Dikembe Mutombo from this famous commercial waving his finger in the air going, no, 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 not today. And the no, no, no stands for normal skin flora, novo biotin sensitive, and not ferment mannitol. All right, so that was a mouthful, but a lot of this is gonna make more sense as the video unfolds, so bear with me. Lucky, lucky for you guys, Staph epidermidis really has just one virulence factor, and it's very high yield, so we only need to focus on one thing, unlike Staph aureus, which had five. For Staph epidermidis, you need to know that its major virulence factor is that it creates a biofilm. And this biofilm consists of both polysaccharides and proteins. So literally, it's like this sticky material that helps the Staph epidermidis with two things. One, adhesion so that it could stick to other substances or other devices. And two, shielding. Once the biofilm is created, not only does it help with adhesion to different materials, but it also helps to physically shield off the epidermidis to prevent things from being able to kill it and get it out of the body or off of whatever device it adheres to. So classically, staph epidermidis is associated with device-associated infections. Because it's part of the normal skin flora and it exists on the epidermis of our hands and fingers, which is why I want you to memorize epidermidis equals epidermis equals hands and fingers. If you don't wash your hands and then you touch a catheter and that catheter gets inserted into a patient, if staph epidermidis got off your finger, off your hands, off your epidermis onto that device, it can cause an infection in the patient that has the device implanted. So while there are other pathogens that this series of videos will talk about that can certainly cause device-associated infections, if you see it on your exam, you need to consider staph epidermidis. And it's because of its biofilm production that it's able to one, stick to these devices, and then two, physically shield itself off because it's got that polysaccharide and protein shield. So it's sticky and it shields the staph epidermidis. That's the function of the biofilm. Now my mnemonic to remember this is we're going back to the hands and the epidermis on your hands and fingers. And I just want you to think about getting something really sticky stuck to your hands and fingers. And the, the mnemonic here is that there's a sticky biofilm that's stuck on your epidermis or on your epidermidis. So something sticky on your hands and fingers reminds you of epidermidis being sticky, causing those biofilms being part of the normal skin flora on your hands and fingers. And for that reason, if someone does not maintain good hygiene and then touches a device, you can get the device associated infection. All right, so let's briefly talk about treatment. Full disclosure, treatment is not high yield at all for the purposes of exams, specifically USMLE and Comlex. So if you're here just for that reason, skip this section. But just for completeness sake, treatment-wise for staph epidermidis, empirical treatment usually begins with vancomycin, but the textbook answer is that you can treat this pathogen using cefazolin, oxacillin, or nafcillin. And lastly, here is our summary slide. Remember that the appearance of staph epidermidis, it's a cocci, right? It's a coccus because it's staphylococcus epidermidis. So it's round shaped, it's spherical shaped, and these typically appear in clusters. Recall also that you will not be able to differentiate this visually if they give you the slide, if you're comparing it against staph aureus. And that's why we look at these characteristics. So it's gram positive, catalase positive, but coagulase negative, which differs from staph aureus. This is also urease positive, which differates, differentiates from staph aureus, and it is not mannitol fermenting and novo biosin sensitive. So those are also unique characteristics to staph epidermidis if you're comparing it against staph aureus. Biggest thing to know in this entire video, again, are those biofilms. Those biofilms are composed of polysaccharides and proteins, and they help with adhesion, and they help with physical protection. So remember the sticky epidermis, uh, getting something sticky on the epidermis of your hands and fingers. It's sticky, which reminds you of biofilms. It's on your hands and fingers, which reminds you of epidermis, epidermidis, 
specifically that staph epidermidis is part of the normal skin flora. Treatment, not high yield at all, but for completeness sake, oxacillin, nafcillin, cefazolin, and vanco. Mycin. So that's everything that you need to know and hopefully nothing more for staph epidermidis.